Hallelujah. Happy Easter, Troy United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you have chosen to uh, gather like this and worship together with us uh, together on this Easter that really is like none other uh, that I have experienced at least. Uh, We are not gathered in person, but we are together in our longing and our longing to be infused with the hope of God that comes because of Jesus' resurrection. Amen? Uh, you, can, you can even put, to like, touch the amen button now. Amen to that. Uh, my name's Andy. Welcome to everyone watching, uh, but a special welcome to those of you who are uh, maybe a little newer uh, to Troy United Methodist Church. Maybe you said yes to an invitation of a friend, or, or maybe you just kind of found us online because a friend posted it. Uh, we are so glad that each of you are here. Uh, you know, those last two songs that we sang, in fact, I just saw a comment on our, on our feed that, that said that the, the music is beautiful this morning, and it is. I, I especially love those last two songs that we sang. I love them because they tell the story. The story that we are here to remember and celebrate today. Uh, th- this story, it, it really is the centerpiece of the entire Bible story. It, it's, it has shaped the worldview of Christians throughout the ages, uh, helping us understand uh, ourselves, how the world works, how God interacts with the world. And, and really, it's a story of hope. Hope not only for you and for me, but hope for everyone, for the entire world. And wow, I, I, don't we need that? Don't we need that in abundance these days? You know, this morning, I, I want to walk through that story and, and just help us understand exactly where it is that, that we find ourselves in that grand story and, and answer the question, you know, what part do we play as the rest of God's story unfolds? And it's my hope and my prayer that uh, when you get up off your couch (laughs) or wherever it is that you may be sitting right now, uh, that each and every one of us will see ourselves and, and all the events that are just unfolding around us in a brand new light. But even more importantly, be empowered to live out our role in God's story. Now, speaking of wherever you're sitting, I saw this picture making its way around Facebook. Um, and, and, and I wondered if this is how you all set up your living room uh, for worship when we've been getting together online on Sunday mornings. You know, most comfortable in the back rows still, I, I can tell. Uh, you know, m- maybe next week uh, you can take a picture of your, your little setup where you worship together in, in your home uh, and, and send them in. I'd love to to, to share some of those in the future. I, you know, I, I may regret asking uh, for that. Uh, you'll all be like decked out in your PJs eating popcorn or something. I don't know. Um, but, but anyway, the, the songs that we just sang, I, I get distracted easily. Uh, the, the songs that we just sang, they each highlight this story of God. The story of God that, uh, that, that really for today has, has three parts uh, he, here are the parts, and I encourage you, you can follow along in, uh, on your online message notes uh, that are available to, uh, for you to kind of fill in the blanks and take some notes in. Uh, but th- the first part of the story is the cross. The second part of the story is the empty tomb. And the third part of the story is Jesus' return. Now, you may have noticed that flow in each of the last two songs that we sang. They started with a verse about Jesus on the cross, um, then a verse about Jesus uh, rising from the dead, and then a verse anticipating Jesus' return. In fact, um, if you had like a favorite line from one of those songs that we just sang, uh, feel free to type that into the comments right now. Just share share what has encouraged you the most, those powerful lines from the songs. These are such important parts of, of God's story. Uh, this is the story that you and I have been invited into. You know, last week, we took some time to uh, look at the cross, the importance of the cross, the cross where God's justice and God's mercy meet. 
But in order to understand the justice of God, really we've got to kind of come to terms with, with the back story of the cross. And the last three weeks, we've taken a look at that backstory uh, that God is a God of justice who cares for people on the margins, who, whose laws were set forth to protect the vulnerable and provide for the needy. And we saw how God called his people the people of Israel uh, throughout the Old Testament to emulate his character and to live under the authority of God's just laws, which by the way are all summed up. Uh, Jesus summed them up uh, as loving God and loving neighbor. But God's people didn't live that out, at least in whole. They didn't live that out. Instead of loving God and loving neighbor, God's people repeatedly turned inward and were selfish and power hungry. They, they rebelled against God's law in order to live their own law. That's part of our story too. And the result, instead of their community being defined by loving God and loving neighbor, their community was defined by brokenness and sin and pain and spiritual death and injustice. Well, this kind of rebellion against God demanded God's justice. This repeated pattern of sin had to have consequences. And those consequences were paid for in full on the cross by God himself. We just sang about it. Uh, on that cross where Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was lain. Here in the death of Christ, I live. Or, or, or the other song before that, I cast my mind on Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. On the cross, God's justice and God's mercy met. For in God's mercy, Jesus Jesus took our consequences so that we wouldn't have to, so that we could live in a right relationship with God. So God, when he looks at us, no longer sees our, our darkness and brokenness and our sin, but instead sees the righteousness of Jesus. That is, if and when we put our hope and our trust in his gift of grace. That's what our scripture for this morning reiterated. Hear that first part again. I'm just going to be sharing from the paraphrase uh, called the message. Uh, but this is out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, where Paul paraphrased says, Our firm decision is to work from this focused center. One man died for everyone. That puts everyone in the same boat. He included everyone in his death so that everyone could also be included in his life. A resurrection life. A far better life than people ever lived on their own. And when we put our hope and our trust in what Jesus did on the cross for us, we are not only forgiven for our sin, but we are also invited into the resurrected life of Jesus but of course, that's part two of our story. From the cross, part one, to the empty tomb. And that's what we're all gathered around our TVs and our computers and our phones celebrating today. Up from the grave, he rose again. And as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. And then on the third, at break of dawn, the son of heaven rose again. O oh, trampled death, where is your sting? The angels roar for Christ the king. You see, because of the empty tomb, we can have hope. Hope that, that Jesus, the, the just king, is going to set things right. You know, Jesus died an, un, an unjust death. Jesus didn't deserve to die. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, God raised him to life, defeating sin, defeating death. God righted the wrong. And we can have hope that God will right the wrong in our lives 
and in our world that is devastated by brokenness and pain and, and illness and death and, and injustice for sin's curse has lost its grip. Not only on those of us who put our trust in Christ, but sin's curse has lost its grip on all of creation. And as the scripture says, we are invited into this resurrected life. A life that is far better than we could ever hope for on our own. A life that is defined by hope and joy, even in the midst of death and darkness. That's the empty tomb. That's the power of Jesus rising from the grave. But you know what? The story isn't over. Well, we're celebrating the empty tomb today, but it isn't over with Jesus risen from the grave. There's another part. You see, because Jesus is alive, we anticipate his eventual return. But this time, when Jesus comes again, he won't be the helpless and vulnerable baby that we, we celebrate and we, uh, we worship uh, around Christmas time. Uh, we, we sang what the Bible teaches. He shall return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Here, here's how the Bible puts it. From 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Then the end will come. When he, Jesus, hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he, Jesus, must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet and the last enemy to be defeated is death. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. God will reign. God will set things right when Jesus returns. No more injustice. Uh, Revelation chapter uh, 21 and 22, the last two chapters in the Bible, shed more light on what this will be like. There will be a new heavens and a new earth. God will wipe away all of our tears, no more pain or suffering or sorrow or death, those are going to be gone forever. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter. Only those whose hope is in Christ and whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life. The, the, the leaves of the tree of life will be used to bring healing, healing to the nations. No more curse on any part of God's creation. For our God of justice will reign forever. Kids, if, if you are at home, uh, gathered around the computer or the TV with, with your parents right now, would you just shout this out? Just shout it out really loud. That God will rule forever. What a story. What, what a story to shape our lives. But I want to I just pause here as things are settling down at home after the shouting. Uh, I just want to pause here just to, to ask this question and invite you to think about where in this story are we? Uh, maybe this is too obvious a question, uh, but I, I really don't want to make any assumptions. I want to make sure that we're tracking uh, and we're on the same page here. What, where are we at in this timeline? I mean, the, the events of, of the cross and the resurrection, the empty tomb, the, that happened 2,000, about 2,000 years ago. And, and we're pretty sure that Jesus hasn't returned yet. So that means uh, we're probably uh, somewhere in there, in between the empty tomb and Jesus return where, where on that timeline we're at. Uh, we don't exactly know. People have predicted Jesus return uh, and, and feel like we're getting closer and closer. Uh, but, but nobody knows for sure. In, in fact, Jesus said that only his father knows the time, but, but we're certainly somewhere in there. That, that's, that's gotta be where, where we're at in that section. But what does that mean for us? 
Now, this, is, this, this, what I'm about to share is, is really important for us to grasp, to come to terms with the importance of, of where we're at in this section of God's story. This is, this is the heart and the hope of this Easter sermon today. You see, a lot of us, when we think back and when, when we think about when God first really touched our lives and we, we surrendered our, our lives to Jesus and, and, and we put our hope and our trust in Jesus, we can, we can look before that in our story and we can almost see our story in this. We can, we can see how our lives were before Jesus were defined by sin and death and hopelessness and pain and, 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 and we put our hope in Jesus. We, we felt our lives Uh, resurrected to new life. And you know what? I think most of us, when, when we experience that grace of Jesus Christ, especially at the, at the, at the front end of that, we we expected uh, to live uh, above the line uh, from the, the diagram in, in the message notes, uh, to live above that line by God's spirit, to experience healing and abundance and justice. But some of us, some of us may have kind of been let down by what we've experienced in our lives and in the world because that hasn't always been the case for us. There is still so much pain and hurt and loss and bad stuff that happens to us and to others and in this world. My goodness, we're experiencing so much of that right now. Sickness and illness and fear and anxiety and death. And and to be honest, some of us, when we kind of put all of that bad experience together, some of us have gotten kind of miffed at God feeling that God has somehow broken his promise to us. But you know what? Jesus hasn't returned yet. God is not yet reigning over all the earth. There are still other powers and authorities at work in this world. We're not at the end of that timeline yet. No, our place in the story is still in that in-between time, uh, in that crazy in-between time where we are confronted with death and pain and injustice every single day of our lives. Things are not right in this world. We live with great heartbreak in this world. Not all of our prayers are answered. Not all people are healed. Injustice still exists. And yet through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, the kingdom of God has come. Not in its fullness and completion, but the kingdom of heaven is here. It is present. And if we put our hope and our trust in him, our lives can be resurrected with joy and hope in the midst of the seeming hopelessness that is all around us. You know, God's spirit leads us not only to personal transformation and healing, but through the work of God's spirit in his followers, we have the privilege and the joy to have glimpses, even if they're small glimpses of what God's kingdom will look like in its fullness. And friends, in this in-between time, in this God's kingdom is here already, but it's not yet in its full completion. In this in-between time, we have a role to play in the story. We might long for Jesus' return when he sets all things right, but the, the Bible tells us that he's actually delaying, that the Father is actually delaying that time in order to invite more and more people into God's kingdom before it's too late. Hey, here's, here's our role Uh, Kurt read it earlier from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Um, I'm picking up at verse 18. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Amen. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. 
We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Through us. In this in-between time, we're Christ's representatives. Living our lives in such a way that it persuades the rest of the world to have hope and to enter in, into God's kingdom. As Christ's representatives, we are at work, not just providing hope, but at work making things right as doers of justice and sharing the hope of Jesus with the world. But we got to be honest, right? We want, we want to be real and recognize that there are some days when living in this in-between time really hurts. It hurts bad. You know, personally, when, when I uh, look at my own brokenness and my own baggage and when it rears its ugly head from time to time, and, and it does, um, I long for Jesus to return and, and, and totally set me free and, and heal me fully. You know, when horrible things happen um, in, in my life to, to people that I love, when, when I hear the stories of the, the pain and the heartache and, and the things that some of you are enduring, even enduring presently, right now, I long for Jesus to return and wipe away every tear. When I see the injustice of this world, you know, the hatred and the bigotry and the oppression that, that seems to be around every corner, I long for Jesus to return and, and to set things right. You know, when I think of all the, the fear and, and the death that many people are unexpectedly facing right now because of COVID-19 and, and the heartache and pain that seems to consume the entire world right now, I long for Jesus to return and bring healing to the nations. But I tell you something else. When I see how much God has transformed my heart and resurrected my life over the years, how much he has set me free from, I have hope. But when, when I see God make something good come out of, of devastating and, and painful circumstances, yes, even pandemics, I have a little hope. Well, when I see the church rise up and, and stand for justice, like, like in the past six months, we, we saw when our church got together to feed the 50,000 or came together to relieve medical debt for our neighbors. When I see things like that, for me, it's a glimpse of heaven and I have great hope. And I thank God every single day that I have an opportunity in this life to point someone else toward that hope that can be found in Christ. And I thank God that he is holding back Jesus' return, which I long for, so that even one more person can say yes to the invitation of God to be a part of his kingdom. And, and friends, Whatever hope we have is because Jesus rose from the grave. He can't return if he isn't alive. That's why, that's why we say, we proclaim, he is risen. Okay, can you say that with me where you're at at home? Say, Christ is risen. Well, we can't. We can't have his spirit at work in our hearts and at work in the world around us if he isn't alive. Well, we only have this hope. And yes, some days, some days it feels like just a sliver of hope. We only have this hope because Jesus rose from the grave. Uh, isn't that cause to worship? Really, isn't, isn't that cause to celebrate? Isn't that cause for us to say yes to Jesus' invitation to come to him and to live as a part of his father's kingdom in this grand story. You know, in a moment, uh, we're going to close with another song that, um, that tells the story, that tells the story of our living hope, a story that each of us is invited to be a part of. But first, 
I, I want to make some f- formal invitations uh, to everyone who is tuning in, everyone who is watching um, as we pray together. Uh, so wherever you're at and whoever you're with, uh, would, you, would you bow your heads with me, please? Unless you're listening to this podcast later and you're driving, don't bow your heads. Uh, but, uh, but maybe you want to pull over to the side of the road and just let's, let's join our hearts and our minds together um, in this time of prayer. Now, the, the first invitation that I, that I want to make this morning is to those of you who are listening, you're tuning in, and, and you are ready to respond to this invitation into the resurrected life of Jesus. To actually claim your part of God's story to be part of his kingdom here on earth and for all eternity. And friends, that is an invitation that is open to everyone. It's open to you. But there, there is a condition. In order to experience this resurrected life of Jesus, you have to be included in his death. And what that means is that you acknowledge your sin your sin against God and you place that rebellion of yours on the cross of Jesus to be paid by him and not yourself. And then when you humbly come to God that way, you are welcomed into God's kingdom as his child, invited into the resurrection life of Jesus. And if you want to say yes to that invitation, then in your heart, would you join me in this uh, short and straightforward yet life-changing prayer? And this is you receiving Jesus' invitation to come into his kingdom, not by your own work, but by what Jesus has already done on the cross for you. Join me with me in your hearts this prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would pour your grace into my heart as I admit my guilt and hand over my sin to you. Lord, would you take it and do as you promised. Would you nail it to Jesus' cross? And in exchange, Lord, I open my heart to receive your spirit as a sign of a resurrected life with Jesus, both now and forevermore. Well, if you just made that prayer your own, praise God. The Father has held back Jesus' return so you would have this opportunity to say yes to him and to enter his kingdom. But now as we continue praying, I I have a couple more important invitations to make. You see, some of you, many of you, who have already said yes to Jesus to live a, a resurrected life with him, your hope has been in him and yet You're hurting, you're struggling. The reality of living in this broken world, in this in-between time before Jesus returns and sets things right. Oh, if you're honest, it has taken a toll on you. You're not experiencing the joy of a resurrected life because the pain, at least right now, has overshadowed the hope And if that is you, please acknowledge that to God in your heart. And and I want to pray for you right now. My heart breaks for you because there is hope. You may not see it right now, but there is hope. Lord, Jesus endured so much suffering in this life. Even to the very end, though, he was obedient And he didn't lose faith. 
And Father, you raised him by the power of your spirit back to life. And right now, there are so many people joining us online, and they too are hurting. Our world circumstances right now have many of us discouraged and longing, longing for hope. Lord, send your spirit into their hearts to bring healing that can only come from you. Spirit, infuse their hearts with hope. Jesus, you are alive. And I pray we feel you with with each of us. Lord, help these brothers and sisters of mine break their alliance with their pain, holding it against you, and instead receive the hope and the healing that only you can give. This in-between time, Lord, it is so painful. So we pray for your strength to endure it until, as the song says, till he returns or calls me home here in the power of Christ, I will stand. And as we continue to pray, I still have one more invitation and in this in-between time, God invites us, as you heard in the scriptures, to be his representatives in this world to share the hope of Christ with the world. And one significant way is by being a justice doer, to meet the needs of the most vulnerable, to right the the wrongs done to the most vulnerable. And in this way, you are invited to give a world drowning in hopelessness a glimpse of the glory of God to come and invite others into the kingdom of God. This is the charge of the church in this in-between time. So God invites you, every single one of you who has your head bowed now and is hearing these words, to be a doer of justice. And if you're willing to answer God's call to be a hope giver, a doer of justice, his ambassador, please tell him so in this this final few moments of prayer. God Almighty, this is a prayer that we have been praying for the past several weeks. Father, empowered by the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, will you resurrect us to be a church committed to doing justice? Right now, in this moment, we are answering your call to be your representatives in this world, to be your ambassadors. As if you were making your appeal to the world through us. Here we are. We are ready to give the world the hope that we've received through the cross, the empty tomb, and the hope that we cling to as we anticipate Jesus' return. Empower us, Lord, to live out our part of your story. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And the people of God agreed and said, amen. They pressed the amen button on their live feed. Amen. He is risen. Happy Easter. Uh, if, If you are tuning in with others today, make sure, make sure that you share with them how you responded to these invitations, what God is stirring and doing in your heart. If you're watching with your kids, talk to your kids about the importance of responding to God's invitation in, in, in your life. And I would love to know how God's spirit has been moving you. If God has tugged on your heart to respond to any of those invitations, share it in the comments. Comments, uh, send me an email, uh, share your story on your own uh, Facebook page, whatever you do, please know, even if you are watching by yourself, you are not alone. We're on this journey of Jesus together, and it is a journey defined by hope. By hope. So wherever you're at, uh, I encourage you, uh, let's stand and sing together, proclaiming God's story once again and embrace our call to be a reflection of God's living hope. Amen. Happy Easter. Uh, Don't tune out when this song is over. We've got some fun left planned, but uh, let's stand together and sing this song.